What's up guys, welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Erdell, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over a fun little trap against the Karl Khan with C6. And in this trap, we start off by playing D4, and against D5, go with the main line knight to C3. Now following D takes E4, we take back with the knight, and there's many different options here for black, including bishop to F5 and knight to D7, but one of the most popular options at the master and grandmaster level is knight F6 from black. And usually here, white will play a move like knight takes f6. But I think that one of the most underrated and most interesting moves for white is actually queen to d3. The whole idea of queen to d3 is that it still protects the centralized pawn on d4 while protecting the knight on e4. And a move like bishop to f5 looking to pin the knight does not work because we can take the knight with check and win that bishop on f5. Now what if black plays a move like knight takes e4? And after queen takes e4, goes with knight d7, hoping to play knight f6, gaining a tempo on our queen. Well, if black does play knight d7, we could play bishop g5. In the case that if knight f6, we take that knight, and black would be forced to have doubled pawns. And if here black plays a move like queen to a5, checking the king on e1, and attacking the bishop on g5, all is well after the simple bishop 2d2 move, now putting the pressure on black. And if black continues with a move like queen b6, looking to attack our b2 pawn, we're not going to play a passive move like bishop c3 or b3 or rook b1, but defend the pawn while naturally developing our pieces with castling queenside. And if knight f6 is ever played, the e5 square opens up for our queen. We're going to continue with moves like knight to d3, bishop to d3, or c4, and we have a really nice game here. I love white's position. In addition, to knight takes e4 from black. Another interesting move is actually e5. What on earth is black doing? Well, right now, black is trying to get immediate counterplay in the center of the board. And the whole idea is that after d takes e5, black can play queen a5 with check, attacking the king on e1 and attacking the pawn on e5. And here we're going to continue with bishop to d2. And following queen takes e5, now black has a very interesting position, threatening to take that knight on e4. As you guys can see, the knight on e4 is pinned to the king on e1. And if we play a move like f3 defending the knight, I think that black's position is simply better. However, we don't need to worry about this knight on e4. In fact, we will let black take it. We're simply going to castle queen's side. Now, if queen takes e4, we could play rook to e1, pinning the queen to the king on e8. What about the move knight takes e4? What do we do here as white? Well, now we see the trap against the Garl Khan come into play with queen to d8 check. Idea being after king takes d8, we have bishop g5 with check. Both the bishop and the rook attacking the king on d8. If the king goes to e8, we simply play rook d8, checkmate, game over. And if king c7, we finish it off with bishop to d8. Absolutely beautiful mate, beautiful idea. And here we have ourselves a game over at move 11. If you'd like to learn the theory behind the Panov Botvinnik attack, an extremely aggressive and successful opening against the Karl Khan, click the video to the left. If you'd like to explore more chess openings in general, click the playlist to the right. Leave a comment to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.